Welcome back disc golf fans from around the world. The 2022 European Open round three back nine coverage. It's moving day. Jeremy Colling here on the microphone joined by Nate Perkins. Our leaders are doing some incredible things right now on this course, Nate. Yeah, Jerm. It's an absolute treat to watch Eagle McMahon and Paul Macbeth battle it out for this major here in Nokia. We are headed into the back nine. A significantly harder section of the course yes. is ahead of us. Headed into hole 10 here. It's a par four. And we've seen these players just break it apart. If you can throw a 450 foot shot on pure hyzer, do it. This hole <laughs> is not as dangerous, but as you can see, headed into the green here, it's severely sloped from left to right. Those hay bells kind of help you out as they keep the disc from rolling OB right there. But this can be a tricky shot to hit if you're out of position and not quite at the corner. We do see some big numbers on this hole. Eagle spike Heiser out of the hand release. This needs to be moving if it wants to get around the corner. Oh, big mistake right there. Yeah, that, that was just not flat enough out of his hand. I thought that he could mitigate that Heiser release with the speed, but early tree connect for McMahon, and he's going to be well out of position. It's going to be a difficult par to save. Macbeth with an opportunity to pounce. And pushing that hyzer out there, you can see the difference between their shots. That is the airspace you'd like to occupy. Nice. I love that. Thanks. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use that now. <laughs> Have you used that before? Is that a sexton? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't, I've done a lot of these before. I don't know where the <laughs> airspace you would like to occupy. <laughs> Let's see if Nicholas can find that slipstream. Yeah, the friendly skies of Nokia. And th that's really yeah. the, the that's miss. Fine. If you miss, that's the miss you want to see. I mean, the footing is going to be a bit awkward with the slant from right to left as he does his run-up, but he's gonna have a straight look probably 400 feet from the pin. Now Chandler, I am very interested to watch him play this hole. He's going champ boss off the tee. How does he attack this clearly right hand, backhand friendly hole? Plays the hyzer to the tree and from there, is he gonna go flip roller? I, I just, there's so many different ways you can play this as a forehand only player. Yeah, Look at how far Eagle <laughs> takes this back. To get the angle, Eagle is taking it 100 feet back off the OB line. Whoa. So we might need to explain to some people that oh there's a new gosh, rule one shot. in place that if you're out of bounds, you can take your lie as far back as you would like directly in line with the pin. So that's what we were seeing right there. He was OB yeah. throwing three. Yep. From you said it a hundred feet back from the OB line. Yep. What what an ambitious take on the approach. And really the only way he could have the angle, the distance is never really an issue for Eagle. It's all about getting the right angle, and he really took advantage of that rule. And Niklas is gonna be out of bounds at the corner. Yeah, you said it. He had some pretty Pretty tough footing and a, and a pretty tricky angle, honestly. Are we seeing forehand roller again? I th yes, we are. What a way to play the hole. He's gonna be, with his meter away from the fence, he's gonna be inside the circle, I believe. Yeah, yeah fantastic. That is wicked right there. That takes- Ultimate some, trust. Yeah, some trust. That's the word I was looking for. Macbeth, all he can do is... Oh, he needs that buzz to Heiser quick. Oh, and look at that! What a, a change of events, Germ. He's going to be putting for... His par, par from, 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 from 20 meters, and Eagles... Nearly parked for the par. An opportunity for Macbeth to potentially take two strokes. Now it looks like he might be losing one. A 
rare misfire from Macbeth. Yeah, I believe you're right. That's that's right there at the edge of C2, if not outside C2. Yeah. And that, that's really the danger of this green right here. It's 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 so sloped, and the, the OB is only five meters away. What a, you, do you see someone miss on, on that approach? It is too straight correct. often. Well, we saw Niklas miss left. I mean, there's you can miss it in several different ways. That's true. Oh, my gosh. That would have been the most unique birdie we'd ever seen on this hole. But he was able to achieve that feat in round two. So it can be done. We just Did he? With the... With forehand roller. roller he actually oh i think he was goodness. like nearly bullseye it's a pretty sick way to play the hole foot in the planter putt in the basket eagle mcmahon saving par from 450 that is how you do it right there, folks. Incredible precision from that range. Bravo. I mean, that's, that's two strokes right there. Yeah. I mean, Paul, Paul had a routine up and down with that after that drive. And yeah. Push that the bus crowd getting straight. a little. Everybody still. Crowd a little bit anxious there to get on to hole 11 to watch these players, so the exciting hyzer, but we're not quite done with hole 10 yet. I, I, I can't imagine what the way this event has gone thus far. <laughs> that even in the very end of round four that these players are going to be separated by much more than a couple of strokes with that being said Macbeth can easily look back to hole 10 round three and say I left two on the table right there in front of me mm -hmm. only 300 and maybe 10 feet to the pin maybe even less and he was unable to put one in bounds hey Jeremy, what do you say the distance is on this hole about 435 feet certainly not 394 <laughs> It's important to know that. I mean, if you if you play 394, you're landing about here, and you're actually challenging those trees in a way that anything's up to chance. We've seen Eagle throw just through those trees easily every single time. Macbeth has birdied at both times. We have not seen a par from those two on this hole, which is just a super challenging hole. Once again, Chandler, what do you do on hole 11 as a forehand player? This is going to need some help from the trees. And it gets it. That landed in balance. Wow. It hits the tree, rolls backwards, gives them a putt. Love to see it. That was another boss from Chandler. And here's this Soul Crusher DD3 that Eagle's throwing. This is actually one of the stamps that... Manny Trujillo and I collaborated on. Jim. Oh, cool. Yeah, the, the mindful ram. Wow. <laughs> and you said it. You just been blasting those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just oh, go over what them. What was it 14% power? That was four. Yeah, 16, that was about 20. 18%. Okay, okay. That was about 18%. Here's Paul with the force. Paul being a little bit more human, going a little bit. Yeah. A little bit lower than Eagle, but uh, that's that still looks really that's good. That's perfect. What a shot. Nearly acing that right there. And on the circle's edge. Yeah, that's going to be a C2 putt coming up for Macbeth. Maybe C1, depending on how they mark it, but that disc is right on the line. And this is a DD3 from Nicholas. I'm afraid this is not going no. to stay in bounds unless it gets some luck. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, wow. It went five. out of bounds still, but in a place I didn't think it was going to reach. That had a lot of power behind it. Yeah, I'm with you. I thought it was hyzering out early. Oh. 
plus drawing just the slightest bit of the outside chain link. It's going to be back to back bogeys. Kef doesn't mark his lie, so that's a C2 putt. He never puts him any down unless he absolutely has to. Look at this. Niklas's bogey putt is actually farther away than Eagle's drive. We saw a star frame on this hole in the, last, uh, in the first round, I believe. Was the, it was the first round, right? I think so. Yeah. We've seen a minimum of two birdies per round on hole 11, the fourth hardest hole on the course. It, I mean, yes, in some ways it is a wide open hyzer, but you, unless you have been to Nokia and played the beast, you truly have no idea how much of a, a roll of the dice that last bit of the fairway is. And for Eagle and Paul to be three under, six under collectively on that hole thus far is, I mean, it shows you why they have the lead they have over third place. So we have another walk from 11 to 12. It's about a, it's about a seven minute walk. Yeah, that's Up fair. the street, you cross the street and then there's a decent backup once again here on the 12th. Pretty yeah. tricky par four. A yeah. short one, only 600 feet, but a very demanding tee shot. You do have OB early left, and you have this kind of awkward gap. Pay attention to where Eagle's roller lands. If he hits this well, it's going to be challenging that tree right there. He just goes inside. Zinn is just a moving down the fairway. He yeah. has been breaking yeah. this hole apart. Yes, he has. That, that roller, most most players aren't throwing that shot because it this early birch on the left, that first one right there, it kind of and makes that roller feel pinched. <laughs> Macbeth. Not quite enough turnover, but it rolls out into the good side of the fairway. He's going to have a lean-out forehand Anheuser and maybe a backhand Heiser from there. But you see that he landed on the right side of that initial tree bunker that you're trying to miss. Chandler, on the other hand, just playing the one play that you have to, the forehand Heiser up the hill, getting the distance. All the power and the ceiling was driven perfectly. Yeah, that was a gorgeous shot with that. Champ boss. That was a champ boss. Too. That's right. Yep. I thought that was the eight. Nikos inside the tree by quite a bit. This needs to be quite a bit more understable, and you can see that it is. It's that D line FD, and all three of those shots are in prime time. Yeah, I mean, I think Paul's even in a decent spot. It's just hard to, with the rollout around the tree, I think he's going to have a good opportunity oh. to get up to the pin. Oh, yeah, you're right. He's, he's looking directly at it. Chandler with a decent approach. And he calls it the slightly awkward stance, having to go against his body, still throws an absolute gem. Oh, Eagle nearly, <laughs> nearly dunked this. Yeah, he hit metal. Last, yeah. Look how easy of an approach he has. Uh, it almost feels like a, a missed throw that he's not under the basket as, as open of an approach as he had after that drive. So Macbeth is far enough to be able to throw his Luna. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing oh, in the way. Yeah. Wow. Uh, truly a... A good shot off the tee, but a fortunate break as well. I mean, if that hits anything mm -hmm. in that wood line. Yeah, Birdie's kind of out of play yeah. if he gets the, caught up in, in, in one of those low hanging pines. It's a very thick rough down to the left side of the fairway. Chandler. 
Putting woes on 10 and now 12. The one on 10 was a little bit longer, a little bit more difficult, but he, he really needs to make that one. Yeah, I mean, that was six meters. And here, here we go, here's the, the, the pitch you were talking about. Any, anything inside five meters and... I don't speak Finnish, but I'm pretty sure he told those guys, stop it. Yeah, way to collect your focus and pitch your birdie putt into the basket. Chandler, you know, he, he shot a 10 down round in round two to get to this lead card. We mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, this is, he is in year three of playing. He's got two full years of playing disc golf, and that's it. And this guy is on the lead card of a major championship. Throwing all forehand. I mean, that's a, that's a story yeah. in itself. And, and to try to back up such a huge performance, it, it puts nerves on a young player who isn't necessarily challenged and have the experience that these other players can draw from in adversity. He is experiencing these things for the first time. And I think he's doing it in a great way. He's two under in the rain. I mean, that's the rain is the, the, the number one foe for a forehand player. And obviously we know that Chandler is an all-exclusively forehand thrower. Birdies at the top once again. I know it's going to sound like a broken record, but I, yeah. I mean, I, I looked is, a little bit deeper into the scores. Macbeth won this event in his, his first win here, 2013. He shot 32 under par. That was the final winning score. That's what won it. And, That's what they're at now. And the course had an easier par four than hole 15 is now. It's now a very difficult par three. Mm -hmm. And we had an easier par four back then. So actually getting 32 was easier back then. Obviously, the game has come a long way with the players just really saying, hey, Macbeth, I want to challenge myself to be as good as you are. And now we have players all over the world that can do what we once didn't think was possible. So Eagles, Eagles rocking a fresh pair of Vivo barefoot today. Uh, the Vivo oh, Coapa, my God. this yeah. thing is even better than yesterday's. <laughs> Dude, wow. that, that is a laughably great drive. <laughs> these these par fours are just not safe oh. when he has a shot like that. Oh his my bag. gosh. So the v Vivo Barefoot is yeah. one of the premier sponsors yes. of this event. They're on site hooking players up. Yes. And... Uh, they they hooked Eagle up with a pair of the Magna FGs, my personal favorite shoe all time. You know, I think it, I think if you haven't ever tried barefoot shoe, it, it's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot, try them out, see if it works for you. I feel like in um, certain situations, you feel like your feet can grip the tee pad better. You're almost using your toes like fingers. A little high there for Chandler, kicking down into the rough. Forward glancing blow though, he might be able to find something from there. I don't think that he is completely out of birdie range, but it's gonna require a tricky shot. Nicholas about 415 into the pin here. This needs to move. Yeah. The soft ground collects his hyzer. And even if it had been hard ground, I don't think he had enough forward momentum to get near the circle. Yeah. Okay, so Paul's gonna take this buzz up, up that middle gap in between the, the purple birches that we can see. It's just so pretty. Give him some fade. It's just so pretty. That's yeah. Circle's edge, man. Yeah, oh, totally. I think. I mean, he's he's gonna have a. I think he'll probably be around 13, 14 meters. Okay. It's just my guess from that angle. Okay, this yeah, that disc that okay. he's throwing, that one's called the Alpha Tumbleweed Germ. 
Okay, I didn't know there was a disc called the Tumbleweed. That's pretty just funny. Now. The, 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 the disc manufacturer from Texas has a Tumbleweed. Name yeah. yeah. This tumbleweed. <laughs> and that approach tumbles through the gap there, the V, right into the heart of the green. That'll be a short putt for par coming up for Chandler. You're quick, Jeremy. Thank you. Uh, again, just bro breaking holes. Yeah. Uh, never. In, in all my years have I seen a drive that long on this tee. Best to keep pace. Oh. There's a lot of chains. Right side chain out. Eagle now separating himself by two strokes over Macbeth. This has had several different lead changes and ties this round. You know, Chandler's had a tough round. And he's still two under par. Mm -hmm. I mean, he started this back nine a little slow. We've got a little walk through the park, underneath the bridge, mm -hmm. over to hole 14. It's a nice little walk. I, I love the I walk. really like it. And I love this hole. Yeah. And I know you do too. I, I really do. 10 meters. Sets up great for a little... <laughs> Flex forehand or a flat to hyzer forehand or MD1 turnover if you're the eagle stir. <laughs> yeah. The what? The eagle stir. I, the eagle stir. I don't yeah. know. The bird. The thin young bird. No, honestly though, uh, to throw MD1 on this hole to shape that disc at that distance is. Elite. It requires glasses with clear frames. <laughs> Early tree kick and a like double him. kick down to the right side. That will be trouble for Macbeth. I mean McMahon. The Mc, it's a, the McBattle. The McBattle. That's a great name for this event. That is a good name. Yeah, it's a really good name for this event. It's Undertaker, a little low right there from Paul, but... We've seen him stick this drive both times thus far, I believe. I, I, I definitely know in round two he put it in the bullseye. Niklas, I think oh, bullseye's coming up. On a move. Oh, chain high. Wow. Looking into our soul right I there. I think so. Like, did you see that? It made me smile. Hey, Jerm. <laughs> hey, Nate. Did you see that? They like that shot. <laughs> <laughs> he might be asking Nate Doss and Ian Anderson if they saw that live. He's... Okay, so again, Eagle not necessarily buried. You can see how thick that rough is. Mm, no guarantees for that par putt coming up. Awkward footing. Beth, a chance to potentially gain one or two strokes with a big putt here. And that was uh, surprisingly bad. Yeah, you know, he was, I was actually noticing, he was standing kind of on a little bit of a hill. Mm. And with the, the amount of rain that we've had, it's hard to, to trust that back foot to not Correct. slip out. And I think yeah. that's exactly what we just saw happen. Kramer from the woods. Oh, okay, there, okay. there he is. There we go, okay. Yeah. All right, I'm back. <laughs> that was a great what do you putt. call that the, the finger the, the whirling air. dervish I don't know <laughs> the, the twirly bird <laughs> I love that you'll give it a go <laughs> alright eagle that is a great putt to save par a, a bogey here just wouldn't fit the story oh 
it, just it would really be a heartbreaker. Be I mean, this this is not not a hole where the bogey can be taken. I mean, this this course has about 14 holes, and then you have the back four. It it, it really feels like you you cross the road one last time. And then you hit the meat and potatoes of the challenge of this event. You have four of the hardest holes in the course coming up, and a bogey here on one of the easier holes just it just deflates you heading across the road. And, and here we are, hole 15. This par three is 509 feet downhill considerably, and it is just blocked in all ways. If you want to attack this pin, you need a big hyzer, or you have to have a late turning drive that can somehow shape early hyzer to late turn or you have to have the power of a Chandler Kramer and flex the forehand. He birded it in the first round. I'm sure he's attacking again in this round. Yeah, I know. We just saw a grimace from Nate Perkins just thinking about the forehand I can't bird. even really imagine. Yeah. yeah. Akon yeah. trampolines the best bounce in the business. UC Maresma was actually sharing a little bit of info about okay. Akon and said Simon Simon knows all about it. Oh yeah. The best bounce. That's what Simon was doing his trick shots off of years ago when he did the backflip double putt. Oh, so cool. And that was a huge break for Niklas as he hits early tree, drops down inbounds. We saw that from McMahon in round one. And here is the shot. This is going to Heiser out of bounds. It's just a matter of where it crosses. It looks like it crossed quite a bit down there, but that is a huge disc in Chandler's game. He's yeah, gonna want that one he's back. He's gonna want that boss for sure. But you can see it's not a lack of power. The man has Oh, that DD3 is flipped up. And it has gone through the pine! It's going to be in a weird spot, Jeremy. Yeah, that is a huge wide open door for Macbeth to run through if he can come up with a good shot. It doesn't seem like there's wind out there, but both of their shots just kind of wow. took off. That's just a small portion of the spectators what that we have. What a killer that guy is on the course, yeah. man. Yeah. And a great approach yeah. shot from Niklas. Well, you talk about Eagle. Oh, look at that line. Macbeth is safe. Either doesn't matter what side of the line is safe. Yeah. He's perfectly straddling both lines. And he's got to throw this blind approach. What a scary throw this is. And playing it on the safe portion of the green, but he is well long. That's going to be a tricky comeback putt for the par. Yeah, straight at the OB. So McMahon potentially dodging a huge opportunity for Macbeth to carve into that lead, knowing that he is most likely taking a bogey best case scenario, but this is going to require a good approach. This is a weird spot too. Man, yeah. what a touchy back thing right well there. Him. Right online, a scary putt to run with the boat with the out of bounds pond right behind the basket. Macbeth gives it a bid and comes up low. So this is the spot that Chandler got and yeah. Just inside the circle and can't connect for his par. Yeah. 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 No one even near a chance at birdie, and three of the four are going to be taking bogeys. Yeah. Was it still playing as the first most difficult? It was the hardest. Three point okay. six average. Mm. Only four players taking birdie. Ricky Waisaki, Calvin Heinberg, Jona Heinenen, and Jonathan Hama.
to play the sixth most difficult hole on the course. Hole 16 coming right up. But first, let's take a look at that leaderboard. And Kevin just, Jones making a push. That's right. For he is, that lead card, Nicholas is going to have to get some birdies down the stretch if he wants to stay in the top four. That's right, and you gotta remember it's the the hottest round coming into the day would separate all the ties so if they do tie kevin jones would get the nod and would be on that card niklas obviously wanting to be on that lead card a finnish player representing his country representing himself obviously yeah. but you know a, a finnish major it's very important to have a fin on that lead uh, card and so. sure he it means, that it means a lot to everyone in the country and you said this might be the sixth most difficult hole yes it is but this might be the most important because you, this is the hole that you, you could you could ruin your tournament. You can take an infinite number of strokes. Yeah. You don't get to advance until you get the disc and bounce. And this approach we have seen all week, players skipping out the back, hitting that Ford wall. Real quick shout out to one of our title sponsors of the event, Ford. Yeah, we've got the fully electric Mustang sitting there on hole one. How sweet is that? I thought about bringing over my Ford F-150 Tremor, but I decided to leave it back in the States. The, the shipping costs were just too high for this event. Maybe they'll rent you one next time. <laughs> that would be nice. Ford, shout out to you. And Eagle in prime position. I'm very interested to see what line he takes. Uh, Is he going you said Eagle, I think that was Niklas. Um, what did you say? I, I don't you, know yeah. what I said now. <laughs> Great shot from Nicholas. Oh. He's in position, and Chandler takes it out over the OB. Just not a. You don't see players on lead card playing that line. <laughs> this is no. a recipe for success in this hole is to play the wide hyzer. And here's Eagle taking the PD wide. And that is in prime position. And you got to imagine he's. he's already reaching in the bag and taking that tilt out. He knows what he wants to do on this hole. Like that also going hyzer and really no danger for any of these players at all off the tee. Yeah, that's right at the 300 foot mark into the green. So the number in Niklas's head at this point, it, you, you gotta think 19 gets you into that lead card. Does this have enough? enough? Oh, it does! That's, did it skip over it? It hit, no, it hit the hay bale. It hit the hay bale, okay. In the air, just barely enough. That's just perfect. This is why you have to have a forehand going to this point. That hyzer is going down the hill as opposed to the backhand hyzer going up the hill. That ground is just not soft enough to collect the backhands if it's moving with any sort of low speed. This is the star max for Chandler. And guiding it in every single possible way with his oh. hands, Stop. hanging on, missing the hay bales or rolling back to the pin. That's a big time shot right there. Very nice. Every single time you get on the green in two, there's a big sigh of relief, as you know you've played hole 16 well. And you called it, bringing out the tilt. Look at him holding the follow through. Now just sit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I think that's the first tombstone that I've seen on this screen. That was a great shot because the man who designed the disc was right behind Eagle. Just smiling. Smiling. Oh, Look at the cut. Yes, he, maybe, maybe he did. And I believe we actually missed an approach from Niklas that went out of bounds because that putt was for par. Chandler with the birdie. birdies in par for our lead card and we're headed into hole 17. Oof. Does not get any easier here, Jeremy. No. Par 3, 140 meters. This basket is precariously placed on this downslope. 
maybe seven meters from the OB right there. If, if you see the backhand hyzering toward the pin, it's likely OB. Oh yeah. If you see the forehand skipping up toward the pin, it's got a good chance of rolling back down. Mm -hmm. So it's very tough to get this one to sit inside the circle. 11% birdie the first round, 4% in round two, and 10% in round three. A seldom birdied hole, 17. Chandler, with the power, just trusting the high forehand, that is a recipe for success. Wow. That's a huge forehand. And he, he, taking the boss that high like that. Nearly 460 feet of hyzer power. And Eagle going MD1 here again. We saw him base this during the first round. Look at this thing just still turning. It's still drifting, right? And into the tree line and down safe. here his front foot definitely just slipped right there and it's a good thing that disc started to turn because if that had any more hyzer he would have been in a lot of trouble that's still gonna have to put the brakes it does just barely in time deep glass this is still turning over Oh, and a great tree kick off the birch into the safe spot at the top of the hill. But that little approach shot can be a little tricky as these players have to go down the hill onto a very highly, highly sloped green. Okay, so we missed <sighs> Eagles of Roach. Oh, and no. There is his putt for par missing left side, and that's going to be a bogey. And, and I have to say, I actually watched this live as Chandler makes the birdie, huge birdie here. At watching this live, Eagle didn't take a lot of time, and he almost looked like he was running his putt from the top of the hill where it, it just came in somewhat carelessly. It was a surprising mistake because he landed his putter with hyzer on the screen, which allows it to roll. And it rolled nearly back edge of the circle, stayed in the circle, but he missed his first putt of the event now inside C1, taking a bogey, giving Macbeth an opportunity to tie things up here. Oh, actually not tied. Macbeth also taking the part. So he is just one back now, but yep. a, a surprising mistake in that yep. situation because there's really no business running anything from above the basket unless you absolutely need it. It was Macbeth with a or McMahon with a lead going into these final two holes of the third round. Not an opportunity really to, to say I need to make that putt. Anyways, that's my commentary from 34th place talking about somebody in first place so what do oh, I well you know just how difficult the 18th can be I do know that we all know that second hardest hole in the course and on most courses it would be the most difficult but we have a hole 15 here and she takes that title after back-to-back -back birdies takes the box and this is inside. He needs to have distance to clear the out of bounds. Whoa, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a real spot right there. That is cutting it so close on that right side. But so he's wow. Take the forehand up and over the crowd, or I think he has to. Okay. I, I mean, it's either that or the turnover forehand approach. But he's only going to be two sixty from the pin. And this is just nothing but perfection from Macbeth. The only thing is, does it avoid all the pine trees? Does he have good footing? Yeah, that's perfection. He's going to have pure hyzer into the green. Niklas going to try to match that line. Oh, what was his onyx? Nicholas going PD. Oh, this needs to get down quick. Get down quick. Oh, boy. 
Oi, 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 that just hangs on. <laughs> Eagle going FD3. And let's see if he makes an adjustment from the first two rounds, because he's been in a little bit of trouble. Oh, this is definitely a different shot. This could be in danger if it just doesn't... Uh... What? Wow. <laughs> we... <laughs> Shot. I think that was an, a a bit of a misrelease. I don't think, think Eagles. So? Yeah, I don't think Eagle is trying is to attack. What, is that what that smile is right there? I think he got away with one. I think he's trying to play the higher stall play that we see from Macbeth. Oh, whoops! I just kind of cracked my FD three a little too hard, and now I'm halfway up to fairway. Wow. Nicholas, a little bit conservative from from the back edge of the OB right there. Macbeth, an opportunity to get to 32 under. And once again, I will I will repeat, this is the winning score from 2013 if he is able to get to 32 with another round to play. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to get to 32. Yeah, going all the same disc into the green there and just right inside the bullseye. Can Eagle get to 33 and maintain his lead? I think he will. I mean, he is so far up the fairway. Oh, Heiser. Really, it's that was... Will it stick? Oh, it sticks, but it is in a spot I don't think he can... Uh, yeah, that's 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 deep in the pine. I don't think he's going to have any look. Hole 8 and hole 18's approach are just two places he needs to be able to figure out the 280 and in backhand. I'm with you. Tactic for Eagle... Finding that one space between the two pine trees, Eagle just in the back side of the green. And this is actually a huge putt for Niklas. He knows at this point that he has to make this putt to get onto the lead card. He is currently tied with Kevin Jones at 18, which would give Kevin Jones that nod, and he is going to miss, which means Kevin Jones will be on the lead card unless Chandler does something crazy and runs this putt and goes out of bounds or something like that. Uh, instead, he just hits the Bodistamo target. That means the lead card is set for the final round. Wow. From zero misses inside C1 all event to back to back. 17 and 18, Eagle leaves two putts. Yeah, I'm stunned right there, Jeremy. It looked like he hit outside solid, but uh, maybe just a, a fraction off. Just a fraction off. But, but yeah, you're right. Back to back inside the circle. And this is going to tie it up here. And then the battle is yeah. going to continue. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the fans have to be stuck. I know that. I'm Who is it? I'm... I mean, very rarely do we have a situation where we are essentially guaranteed only two players have a, tie, a chance at the title. And it's just going to be a race to the finish line between these two players. Taking a look at that leaderboard going into the final day, and we have an All American League card followed by an All Finish Chase card. Come on. It is, you can't write this stuff up. This is fantastic. 10th place. 21 shots behind the leader. 10th place. Top 10 in a major is incredible. When you say that you're 21 back of the lead, it doesn't sound incredible, but it still is. <laughs> One more round of action coming to you tomorrow from Nokia, Finland. Jeremy Colling and Nate Perkins signing off. We'll see you tomorrow.